Okay, so the first part of today's um, video is going to be sorting out the cock-ups from the last video. Uh, one issue I knew about um, already at the end of the last um, video, and it was just a, what do you call it, I suppose, a um, design error. Um, I hadn't thought about it thoroughly. I thought I was doing the best uh, job to make it easier in the long run. Obviously I wasn't. And that is, let me just show you, here, these slots. Now I put them in to this thinking that it was going to be much easier if I needed to change the platen um, just to drill and tap a hole in there. Um, but obviously it's not because this bar won't come out. Bangs on there. So, it's not a great issue. What we'll do, I'm going to remove these. Um, fill these in. Just weld them up. I'll put a little bit of bar in there or something perhaps. Weld them up. Both of them. And then on these, we'll put, instead of that, we'll put a slot in there. We'll put a bigger hole back here at 8mm clearance and slot that. And then instead of welding this to the front plate, which I was going to do, it comes down here, I'll probably just put a couple of bolts in. And then we can uh, have it flush, have everything flush. We'll focus. We'll drill and tap this instead of the slots. Then that bolt can come through from the other side, come through from there, and we can grind it off flush here. Then that will come through. So that's the first issue. And the second one, real, I'm really ashamed about it, a real schoolboy error. Um, and the, I think it was the second uh, comment on the video yesterday uh, mentioned it in a very nice way, had I thought. Uh, no, I hadn't. I put these on the wrong side. What a complete knob. They should have gone on that side because this side is where the belts are going to be running. From here. That way. Now, I've just mocked up a belt on it and I probably would get away with it. They're, they're low enough that by the time the idler is up here somewhere, or the tracking wheel, uh, and it comes from down there, up here, even if I've got a small wheel on, I probably would get away with it. But just to make sure, sort of future proof it, I'm going to have them off of there and I'll stick them on the other side. That's the beauty of uh, metal work. You can just fill holes up with welders, cut stuff off with grinders and start again. And I suppose it's part of prototyping and that, you know, all these little things. Um, you think you're doing the right thing and then you find out you're not. So, that's what I'm going to do first on this video. Hopefully by the time I've sorted them out, the wheels might have turned up and then I can carry on. But if, if they haven't, I'm going to get the this bit, hopefully, sorted out next. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that and then I shall probably show you it in like Duresta style, fast forward, and then get on with the, the next bits. So, let's get cracking. Okay, so... I've just cut a couple of bits of um, half inch thick material, just cut them off about just under 8mm because that's what the, the gaps are. I've put a little bit of a chamfer on both the, the little bits and the arm itself so that I can get a bit of, pen bit of penetration. We're just whacking some weld in there, I turned it up a little bit so we get a nice bit of penetration because I want to get it right filled up because sometimes when you fill up holes like this you get sort of voids and I want to make sure it's completely filled up because that's where I'm going to drill and tap again so just adding a few little bits to bring the edges up alright, we're just going to quickly grind it off Actually, this grinder, I think 
or this disc has had it. It's not cutting very well. It's actually clogged, right clogged up. You can see. I'm just going to run a wire brush across it. See if I can clean it up. Mm, no, it's not much better. It's still not taking anything. Let's put a new one on. There you go. That's better. And I'll tell you what, once uh, we've got a coat of paint on this job, you'll never know those slots were there. So you'll have the bits of angle iron in the way as well on one side and the bolts the other side. Now that was hot. I shouldn't have done that. So, no, you'll never know it was all there. I suppose, you know, these things do happen when you're designing jobs. I shall alter the patterns or the, the cam CAD drawings um, and do away with those slots. Um, and I'll possibly put in a couple of um, small holes to use as pilot holes. Um, you don't want to go trying to uh, tap through laser cut holes. You'll find them very hard. You'll probably break your tap. Oh, bugger. Oh, it's like a bar of soap. Get hold of it. Get a pair of grips on it. So, yeah, I'd probably put just a couple of pilot holes with the laser cutting and then you can drill them out to the right size for the 8mm tapping size that's if you decide to use 8mm might want to use bigger or smaller maybe, I don't know right, I'm just going to re-drill them I've marked them because stupidly I didn't take the measurement of what how far apart they were, the slots, so I've had to sort of guess it. I th I'm pretty sure they were 120, 120 uh, mil centres. So that's what I'm drilling these pilot holes at for the tapping size. And it's actually a l little bit, it does make it a little bit harder once you've um, welded the holes up. It's a bit like the laser cutting, it sort of um, hardens the edge. It must be just something to do with the, the amount of carbon there is in the steel and the heat that you put into it with the welding. It's often a little bit harder where you've filled holes up, which I've done on many occasions. Right, there you go, let's go and give them a tap. There we go. Sorted, done. Right, let's get on with this uh, bracket. You can see it's a right rusty old piece of uh, angle iron I managed to find. That'll be alright once it's cleaned up. I'm just going to slit them out with a um, slitting disc on the angle grinder. Whip it through. Let's quickly tidy the edges up for the file. See if it fits. Look at that, perfect. Do the other one, which I won't bore you with. Alright, see if they fit on there now. Lovely job. And I must admit, I've seen a lot of other grinders with this uh, method, with them being tapped into the, the actual arm bracket, and I didn't quite know why. I thought it would be a you know 
simpler doing it the other way but obviously I've discovered why because now that side's nice and flush nothing sticking out actually those bolts are about perfect length haven't had to grind them off or anything so let's stick it back on the arm and there you go I haven't drilled these yet and you can see that slides lovely and freely now through the hole and then eventually that will go somewhere like that I've got the, the brackets to go underneath so that it can be tilted but that's got to go on there so we're going to move these now let's hack them off again just got my slitting disc I'm just going to cut into the weld I'm going to try not to cut into the base metal I don't uh, particularly want to obviously sometimes it's unavoidable you will nick the, the base metal but, uh, I'll tell you what, whoever invented these little slitting discs bloody marvellous things really handy for all sorts of little jobs like this all right, let's give them a tap, see if we can get it off. Yep, look at that, straight off, this one. Oh, yeah, that one come off, all right. <laughs> let's give it a grind up, take all the sharp edges off. Again, once this is all ground up and there's been a coat of paint on it and there's things in the way, there's belts, there's you know all sorts flapping around you'll never notice that they were they were there you probably see it if you looked but uh, the old saying goes blind man will be pleased to see it all right let's smooth that off let's just take the scale off the other side where I want to weld them I'll tell you what the scale and half tough on this plate I don't know what it is really doesn't want to come off. Let's get the ordinary wheel see if we can just take a bit off of that it's uh, really hard stuff this on this bit of plate. Right, they're going to go back in there but first I'm just going to quickly clean them up because they've got a few spots of weld on them where I've cut them off Right, position the first one. Let's whack it back on. Just going to do exactly as I did before, just four welds. Two at the top, two at the bottom. Like I said on the when I did it the first time, I don't want to uh, put too much heat into it and distort that side plate. I suppose really I should have put some more bolts in there so that it can't go anywhere. But uh, it's just a little bit easier to get to the welds if the bolts aren't there. Actually, the bolts will pull it all back in fairly tightly if it has distorted any amount. Do the same with the other one. And I suppose it's often you get to see the same job twice on a, <laughs> a series. I really can't believe I did that, put them on the wrong side. I'd planned for them to go this side, really had. It didn't even occur to me when I was doing it. I put them on the wrong side. What a complete dick. Right, now what I'm doing here, because the bits I've cut off have got threads in them still, because I threaded them right the way through, I'm just using the tapping size drill to just spot the plate underneath. 
uh, then I shall pilot it and then put the tapping drill through again. So that's why I'm sort of changing lots of drills. Um, because there's not really another way of doing it. And I'm too tight to have put two new bits of bar on and dr drilled and tapped through the whole lot. Perfectly good bit of bar. So that's what I'm trying to do. It's a bit tricky trying to line this up with all the bolts underneath. And get it, trying to get it level enough just to spot it. That's all it needs, just a little spot. And we can pilot it. See what we can do. Tighten everything up. And away we go. It's not a foolproof method for drilling a tapping size through an already tapped hole, but it's the best one I've come across. Um, you know, sometimes it will. Your your tapping drill will wander, and you'll take a little bit of the thread out. Um, but it, that's a risk you've got to take if you're doing it. You know, that's how the cookie crumbles. If it if it does, then you might have to start again if you take too much thread out. But uh, I'm going to risk it. See how we get on. If you get things fairly, you know, lined up and central, you'll need to. Oh, sounds like it's phasing. I want to go. Um, yeah, if you get things lined up and fairly central, it all happens fairly easily. Right, let's tap them. Now. And I made another bit of an error here. I've picked up just a little tiny tap wrench and it's making hard work of it. It's amazing. The leverage, or the less leverage you've got on it, it really, and I'm struggling, I'm a bit worried, it feels like it's going to break. Um, and again, I'm not sure if that's because it's slightly gone hard where I've welded it, but you would have thought that would have happened the first time when I did it on the other side, but it's it's going a bit tough. Um, like I said before, this 10 mil isn't the toughest, isn't the sharpest of taps, and I think we'll we've done it. I'll do the same with the 12 mil. I really should have got the bigger tap wrench out again. I use that all the all the time for a 3/8. Whitworth for my shoeing for stud holes. Right, well, there you go. Let's see if it'll fit. Yep, that one's okay. Let's see if we can get the second one in. No, right, butter fingers. Yeah, there you go. So they all fit back in quite nicely, like they did by the other side. Perfect. Okay, so after that little effort, we're sort of back to square one where we left off yesterday. Um, but I'm feeling happier now that uh, I've got that sorted out. Um, but I have just realised I can't put the rest on yet uh, until I've got the wheels because I don't know how far spaced out the wheels are going to be from the bar that they're, they're on. Um, let me show you, hang on. Get you off. Right. So. 
So, the wheels going on here, but they, they actually, I think they have to be spaced out slightly. So, where the wheel starts, I don't actually know. So, I can't really attach that anywhere until I know where the wheel's going to go because the where the belt's going to run. So I can't actually do that today. What I might do though is um, do what I said yesterday at the end of yesterday's is bolt this down. So I might just mark that, drill that, bolt that down. Let's see what we can do with that. Right, so I'm just going to attach the motor because obviously the the motor feet have got holes in and I'm going to mount them down as well, mount the whole lot down. Um, so I want to get it all lined up, make sure everything sort of fits so that I can mark all the base plate holes at once. I don't want to do the sort of the grind a bit and then at a later stage do the motor. So I'm going to do it all in one go. So I'm just going to tweak everything up. I love Allen headed uh, bolts but they can be a bit of a fiddle sometimes. I like the look of them, I think they look quite classy. And uh, Obviously you have a job to strip them. Right, that's got that on. Let's see if I can line this up. Not quite sure exactly where to put it. I was thinking about trying to put it far enough over so that I could eventually tilt it. So tilt it to the left so that the um, grinding the belt was sort of underneath the machine so I could use it flat but I haven't got a big enough base plate plus I think it would be better to tilt the other way um, in which case I'd have to put it up on a bit more of a pedestal but uh, I don't think I'm going to need it to tilt to be honest right I think I've got it lined up where I want it I'm just going to use my sharpie through the holes just to mark where they are. Do the same the other side. And now unfortunately I can't get to the motor um, holes because they're under the, the actual motor so I'm just going to quickly make a little bent scriber. Right, a little bit of stainless steel, bent scriber just so I can get under the body of the motor to scribe the feet holes. Do the other end. Only needs a little line just so I can see where to put the centre. Right, let's take the motor off again I think. Find me Allen key, there we go. Put that somewhere safe. I'll tell you what, once this is all uh, assembled, you know, I've gonna weigh some. Um not gonna wanna be uh, humping it about the workshop much. At least it won't sort of jump about on the bench while it's working, that's for sure. But it's gonna be a lumpy old piece. Oh, and the other thing I did, whilst I was, I didn't do it on the on camera, but whilst I was uh, rectifying my cock-ups, the um, little spacer in the at the top, right at the very top, which I put in, was slightly large. Um, so I've actually turned it down, just for my own peace of mind just I don't know I'm just a bit anal like that I suppose it was just about a millimeter too big so I've 
quickly sh machine that down. See if I can see them all. Yep, looks like I can. See if I can find myself a centre punch. I'm going to punch them rather than using that automatic one because it's really not much cop that. To all the ones that I can see well. A couple that aren't uh, particularly well uh, defined, put it that way. So I'm just checking with the straight edge that they are actually in the right place. Checking on against that one. Make sure the. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm having a mental block. I can't count at the moment. One says 75 and the other says 85, but they're both 85. I just have to double check it. <coughs> Excuse me. Just do the you know, the motor ones. Right. Let's get her drilled. There's quite a few of these, so we'll keep you sped up a bit. I'm sorry about this video. It's um, it's it's sort of half an hour that didn't really need to be done, apart from this last little bit. Um, but I thought I'd share it with you anyway. Share my ups and my downs. But if you don't see the downs, you don't, you know, when you do things yourself and it doesn't go right, you think, oh, well, so-and-so always does it and it works. Why can't I? Well, this just goes to prove that it doesn't always work. And I think you'll find that on a lot of videos. Um, you know, people have edited the uh, the cock-ups out. I don't think uh, the only person that never makes a mistake is the person that doesn't do bugger all. It's what I was always told as a boy. And I think it's pretty true. And I say, luckily, with iron, you can rectify things fairly easily. I dare say if you were working in the aircraft industry you'd have to start from scratch but <laughs> or the space industry or whatever but basic old iron fighting like this you can get away with all sorts tap all these out now I did get my big tap out again or tap handle, tap wrench and it's just so much easier. There's just that little bit extra leverage. Just makes the job go easier. I don't know quite what. Well, obviously it's the leverage, but why it doesn't feel like it's tightening up and going to snap like it does with a small lever, I don't know. Anyway, that's all tapped. Let's see if we can put her together. Just like dry fit, as they say. I think that's the expression. See how they go. It's going in. I could have done with some slightly shorter bolts for bolting this down, but when you get free bolts, you can't be too choosy. Give them a little tweak up. One doesn't want to go in. I don't know what's happened there. Doesn't seem to be lining up, and I don't. It's probably just the way I've drilled it. That one's going in. Let's see if the other's going in at the back. Yep, they're going in. So it's just that one. Those two are okay, and that one isn't for some reason. Oh, look at that. Sod's law, it's going in now. <laughs> Just needed a net, perhaps pulling over from the back with the back one. Get 
see it's lifting it off the bench because they are about a quarter of an inch too long. But what I'll do is, um, once it's all bolted down, I'll grind the ends off so that they're all flat. I may even, when it's finished, put some little rubber feet underneath. You know, any tiny ones. It'll hopefully take any slight vibrations out and give it a bit of grip to the bench. Because I can imagine it, although it's not, it's heavy enough to not go anywhere, it might sort of vibrate its way across the bench. Right, it all fits. What I'm going to do, I think, is open these holes out a bit because I did put quite a tight clearance hole. So I think I might just open them out a bit. They're, I think they're eight and a half mil, and I think I'll probably whip them out to sort of nine or nine and a half. Um, just to make putting it together a little bit easier because they were a little bit tight. So, we're getting there. Let's get the. Uh, all works nicely now. That tightens up and holds it. Let's see about that one. That tightens up and holds that. Pucker. So, we have achieved something today. So I'm just going to put the motor on, make sure that all lines up. So that's on. Everything's tightened down. I've, I took it all apart and opened those holes out and put it all back together again. And it went back together much nicer with slightly bigger holes in the feet. And it's all there. So hopefully the wheels will turn up tomorrow we can continue. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.